Welcome back, everybody, to Farming Simulator 22 and December and snow and frosty. Hi, Frosty. <laughs> oh, two Frosties. All right. Yeah. So uh, welcome back, guys. I uh, spent the rest of November the 3rd doing the cultivating contracts. So I got those banged out. And then I refueled the New Holland, repaired the New Holland, repaired the cultivator, and we ended up with $133,548. Uh, when that was all said and done. Now, I debated whether or not to purchase field 50 in November, because if I purchased it in November, then I could have prepped it and got hay on it. But I decided not to do that. I decided to wait um, uh, to do that. Um, and partly because the this field here 54 has a crop of barley on it and i'm thinking about maybe buying this field instead of 50 i mean we'll eventually buy 52 that's my intent but this already has a crop on it this doesn't this is a larger field it's 180,000 um as you can see right here 180,504 dollars but look at all the extra space that comes with it. Uh, so we could turn this into, you know, we could we could increase the capacity of this field by another 30, 33, 30 percent ish um, just by that extra, you know, that it comes with. So it's very, a very valuable property. Um, so what we could do is we could buy this. We could convert this strip to a hay field and just, you know, leave the barley alone, of course, until we can harvest it in July. And then that will set us up probably f for a good, a long time for our chicken feed. And then after that, decide what to do with the rest of the field, whether or not we want to convert it to hay too or do something else with it. So I'm thinking that might be the better move for us. Now, what does this field have on it? Um, crop types. I'm not sure what that, yet, uh, that light green is. I think that might be canola. Um, if we remove that, yep, it's canola. Okay. So that has canola on it. That doesn't do us any good in terms of, you know, feed for the chickens. Um, plus it's not, you know, it, it, this is the better deal just because of all the extra land that this comes with. So that's kind of what I have in mind. Um, we do have some, one of those sale thingies that came up that we can, uh, sell, rebuy, and make a little tiny profit. So in the sales right now, this is a slurry tanker. This is a forage wagon. So neither one of those are things we're interested in at this point. Uh, but notice that this trailer, which is the same one I have, I can purchase it for ninety nine sixty, and it only has eleven months on it. Okay. If we go to my trailer, we can sell it for eleven ninety one, and it has twenty seven months on it. See where I'm going <laughs> going with this? Um, we could probably even repair it and get maybe a tiny bit more money, but it's probably not going to be worth it. So let's do this. We're going to sell this trailer. And we're going to purchase this one. So we turned a tiny profit and we purchased a newer trailer than the one we we had. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> Let's see, 99.60 and 11.09. So what did what did we make? We made a little over a thousand dollars on that deal. So not bad. <laughs> I love it when we can do stuff like that. It's just amazing. Um, okay, let's just leave that trailer there for now. We do need to sell our corn here in December. Of course, we're gonna wait till January on the silage. Is it fermented yet? It's 98%. So it will be by the end of this day. And look at the snow. It's awesome. Okay, cool. Um, so I already have the New Holland hooked up to the trailer. We have 6,845 liters. Oh, I guess I left the lights on on the tractor. That's not a good idea. So we're going to go sell this because December is the best month to sell corn. Um, let's just double check that. I believe that is the case though. Uh, corn December. Wait, what? Last month, when I looked at this, December was the best month. Has it really changed that much? Oh, my word. No way. Uh, 
Uh, I can't believe that. I've never, I've never noticed these seasonal fluctuations change so dramatically from one month to the next. All right. Well, I guess that means February is when we would want to sell this corn. I mean, we don't have that much anyways. That is bizarre, unless I was looking at the wrong thing, which is always possible. Yeah, I wonder if I accidentally had clicked on potatoes. But even that's not December, though. Wow! Um... Okay. I guess we're not going to sell our corn now. The thing is, though, is if it's changing like that, I mean, what happens if we wait until January or February and it changes again, you know? I don't think those prices would fluctuate so dramatically. Unless I just was click I had clicked on the wrong thing. Um, I don't know, man. But this is not the time to be selling this corn, so we might as well just leave it in the trailer until either A, we need the trailer for something else, or, you know, it is the best time to sell corn. I'm really kind of baffled by that, to be honest, though. Hmm. Okay. Well, let's put her back in the, in the shed for now, or in the barn. I am reading that right. <laughs> it's just like, I can't believe that. I could have sworn it said December when I checked this in November, like 10 minutes ago before I started the recording. Huh. Okay. Well, I must have had something else selected. That's all. That's the only explanation I have. It could have, I could have had barley selected because I was looking at barley and that does sell best in December. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe that's what it was. Okay, well, I guess we're not selling our corn today, guys. <laughs> Crap. Uh, okay. No. Are you, are you disconnected? No, you're not. And now it throws me back out on this side again. There we go. Okay. So yeah, I think um, I think we're just gonna sit on our money, and and very likely purchase this barley field over here. After we do our big sales, excuse me, sir, uh, our big sales in January. Let's just go look at this field real quick together because if you, especially if you count the extra land that we get along with it, it's going to be a fantastic field. Plus it's flat and it's rectangular <laughs> for the ideal situation, right? For a field. Um, and we, you know, we could even convert half of this strip to, to field two. And we would eventually buy this other one, and then I'd probably just make combine both of them together as one big ginormous field. We would probably cut these trees down, too. Yeah, there's a lot more land right here. Significantly more land here. We'd even get a tiny bit of money from these trees. Not that we'd get rich off that, but still... We'd have quite the the steep incline at this end of the field, but we that's not a big deal. You just approach it from the uphill side. Um, would we be able to get any closer to the train tracks? Nah, it doesn't look like it. It looks like it it ends there. But I mean, it goes all the way to the road though on this side. Yeah. I like this idea. 180,000. 180,000 and barley for our chickens. That I didn't have to prep or plant and it's, you know, fully prepared field. It's 
So that seems to me like to be the right move. That's a better move than buying 50. 50 is cheaper, but 50 doesn't have a crop on it. Um, so yeah, that's really probably the, the main reason. But again, I, I will eventually, Lord willing, uh, buy 50 too, you know? I mean, I'm planning on it. I just think that that's the better deal for us to do right now. Well, I don't know that there's anything else for us to do then on December 1st. Uh, and probably not December 2nd either. December 3rd, of course, will be our produce sales, as usual. And the trailer's already there. We could start loading it. <laughs> oh, that was great that we could be able to do that. We didn't, you know, we didn't get filthy rich off of it, but it's, it's just kind of a, a cool thing when you can make a deal like that. Sell an older trailer, buy a newer trailer, and make a profit at the same time. What more could you ask for, right? What more could you ask for? Yes, indeed. Well, all right, guys. Uh, so we've checked the sales. There's nothing there. Uh, there's contracts don't come up in the winter months. So let's just double check that. But yeah, we're not going to see any contracts until March. So that's not an option. Uh, our hay's not going to be ready until March. So that's not an option. I think what we do then is we just sleep till December 3rd. I'll load up the trailer, bring you guys back uh, for the sale just so you can see how much money we make on that as usual. And then we'll go into January and then January is going to be sell the silage month and that's where we're going to make some moolah. And I guess the corn, no, the corn was in February, right? Uh, yeah, according to this. I, I, get, I must have just been looking at the barley. That's the only thing I can think of because I don't think these thing, these prices change. Um, they, because if they did, there'd be no point in hanging on to stuff because by the time it came around to sell it, it could change. You know what I'm saying? So I, I must've been looking at barley. That's the only thing, only reasonable explanation there. Anyway. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, uh, I'll sleep till December 3rd. I will bring you back on the second. If there's a good sale, if not, I'll sleep till the third, get the pallets loaded up on the trailer, bring you back at that point for the sale. Okay. So I'll see you guys uh, in just a little while. Guys, look what we have for sale in the used equipment. We have a Kloss square bather up to 240 centimeters for $51,000. It has 35 months on it, so it's got some mileage on it, but it's not a lot. Uh, what's this? This is just a cold fader. Yeah, we don't need that. What's this? This is... This is a direct drill with a six meter working. Yeah, no, that's not something that's not something we need. I mean it would be nice to have, but this, however, we you know, I want to get into square bailing. We did have a square baler come up for sale a few months ago, but it was like over eighty thousand dollars and just not within our means. We're gonna be selling our silage next month and that's going to bring in some pretty nice cash flow so i think it would be smart for us to purchase this now we you know we still don't have the other square baling equipment yet but you know even if we just buy this and sit on it until we do get the other equipment or we could lease the other equipment if that made sense um i think we need to do this so we're going to do it whether we should or not we're going to do it look at that a clause Quadrant 5300 FC square baler, and it does up to 240 centimeter bales, which is the largest square bale that we can make. That's a 9,000 liter bale. Um, so, I mean, the wheels look fine. The setup, what kind of wheel setup? Oh, and we can't change that anyway. Maybe it's de it depends upon the wheels. But no, that's fine. I, 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 don't, I don't think we need to do anything different about that. Look at this thing, man. All right, well, this is the first step towards getting us into the larger square bales, which ultimately, that's what I want to do. Let's buy it. Fantastic. Absolutely phantasmagorical. Look at that big old thing, man. 
It's a monster. What are... What do these wheels do? I don't know. Interesting. Okay. Um, it does need to be repaired. And that's going to cost a little bit of money too. But probably not an astronomical amount. In fact, both of these items prob probably need a little bit of repair, repair action. Got to get a little closer, I think. No, not that. Oh, I'm I know what's going on. I got the I got the um latches pointing the wrong direction. You have to have the latches pointing towards the vehicle. All right. So, let's repair the farm tech for 227 and the baler for 820. Oh man, that is that was a good buy, you guys. That's that's the kind of thing we're looking for in these sales. Absolutely good buy. I feel super good about that. It was a good move. I might have reconsidered if if you know January wasn't right around the corner with you know the cash flow coming in but I think that was absolutely the right move for us um okay so let's see let's think about what else we're gonna need we are gonna need the square baler pickup trailer let's look at that how much does that thing cost brand new uh, let's go here and we're looking for bale loaders. So this is $90,000 new, but if we were to get this, we would have to get this and we would have to get the, the bale wrapper. So we do lose out on being able to wrap the bales as as and bale at the same time, but I think you know well it'll make up for it by because we're going to to larger square bales. So it's going to be a little more work, but we're also going to be able to sell for more and have bales that are a lot easier to work with because they're square. So we're looking at basically the other thing if we bought brand new. I'm not saying we will, but if we bought brand new, we're basically looking at a hundred and fourth uh, no hundred and forty four thousand dollars to buy both of these things because the other thing was 90 or very close to it but we also could sell this well okay we're gonna get ten thousand back on that which isn't a lot and we could sell this um okay and that'll give us forty five thousand dollars back uh so that you know that that'll definitely That'll basically pay for the the wrapper. Um, so then we're just back to ninety thousand dollars again, uh, that we would be out for the for the pickup trailer. I'm trying to think, am I if I'm missing anything? We still really want to buy the Pottinger windrowing mower though too. Okay, well, uh, like I said, I'm not planning on buying that stuff brand new right now. I'm just trying to see what kind of investment we're looking at to get the setup that we need. And if we're lucky, you know, some of that stuff will show up in the in the sales. But right now, we need to hang on to our, our round bale setup until we have a full square bale setup, I think. Or we lease. We sell the round bale setup and we lease the stuff that we need to do square bales. Um, so uh, what are we looking at there then? So to lease this guy, we're looking at twenty-seven fifty-four. To lease this guy, we're looking at forty-five ninety. So basically seven a little over seven grand to lease both of those things. And we're also, you know, leasing the Pottinger mower, so that's another four thousand. That could get expensive because we would you know, we would be doing it like 
four or five times a year on our own crops. Hmm. I don't know. I, I Let's just sit on things. Let's not make any ch other changes. We'll keep doing the round baling for now until we can acquire more kit for this on the sales. I think that's what we'll do. So now the next question is, where, do we, where are we going to store this thing in the meanwhile? We definitely want it inside under storage. Don't really have a good spot in here. We could maybe try and squeeze it back here and move these things out to the front. That might be the, the smart move there. Yeah, I think that's what we'll do. Either that or I... Well... If, if we put this in the barn along with the trailer, that's not going to give us a lot of room to maneuver the forklift. Well, actually, maybe it would. Mm, I don't know. That thing's pretty long. No, actually, I think it would work. Okay, well, well, let's try it. And if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. And we'll go to plan B. I'm going to actually just leave the trailer right where it is because we got to load it tomorrow. In-game day tomorrow. This was a good buy. I think we've done good, man. Gotta be able to clear the forklift. I can't tell how far I'm back I am. Oh! <laughs> yeah! Um. That is gonna make things kinda tight, isn't it? Let's just look at it and see. How tight? I mean, we can make it work. Yeah, we can make this work. Okay. There might just be a tiny little bit of scratch of paint on our trailer there. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Okay, guys. Well, now we're going to sleep until December 3rd. And I will load up the pallets and bring you guys back. At that point, when they're loaded, we'll go sell. And then I think we'll be done with December. Uh, our chickens are getting low on feed. We have more feed at the train station for them, though. Let's look at that. I don't want them to run out of feet, of course. Yeah, they'll be fine. Um, they'll be fine till tomorrow for sure. And maybe we will go refill them tomorrow on December 3rd. Okay. And our greenhouses should be fine on water and fertilizer. Yeah, they're doing okay. Very good. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow on December 3rd. All right, guys, we're back. It's December 3rd. I'm just going to go grab the uh, honey over here. we got a full pallet, put it in the cellar, and then we're going to go sell both the eggs and the lettuce to Mama Jo. She's got the best price uh, for both of those, which makes things easy. Let's get right under you. We won't uh, be selling the honey until February, as I've mentioned a few times now. And then after that, I think we're 
pretty much done with December. Good enough, I guess. Park the forklift and then head over there and make the sale. Oh, that was cutting a little closer than we needed to. That's pretty good. We might actually go feed the chickens too before we wrap up uh, this month. <sighs> Nothing in the sales. There is this uh, round bale tube maker thingamadoodle, but we don't need that. Uh, there's a cloth header trailer, a planter cedar, a slurry spreader, and that same uh, cultivator that was in there before. But again, we don't need any of that stuff. <laughs> Okay, so let's hit the eggs first. Thirty-one eighty-five. Okay. Ninety-six seventy-five. All right, so the price is coming up a little bit. What the heck? Oh, the edge of the trailer's caught on her drain pipe or vent pipe or whatever the heck that thing is. All right, so that brings us up to 92,949 here at the end of the year. But we are going to make some money next month for sure. And we got we got a good deal on this trailer here and we got a really good deal on the square baler which I'm pretty excited about. Okay, so let's see. You know, we can't actually feed the chickens because we have all that corn in the trailer. And I think we determined corn is going to be best sold next month. What in the world is going on here? Okay, so here's the thing. In the earlier part of this episode, which was earlier in the day for me, we were looking at corn, and December was not the best month to sell it in. And then I stopped the game and went off and did some other things for several hours, and now it's later in the evening, and we're looking at it again, and now it does say December's the best time to sell corn. What kind of shenanigans are going on here, man? Seriously. Okay. Well, I guess we will sell the corn. I'm glad we looked. And then that'll free up the trailer for us to um, go get some grain for the chickens because they're pretty low. They're not all the way out, but they are low. How bizarre is that? Oh, we need a... Yeah, we need a tractor for this, not the not the pickup. We need the pickup for the water tanker because it's a fifth wheel connection. We could get a dolly for it if we want to use a tractor, but the pickup works just fine, so 
That is weird, man. I cannot explain it. I did, of course, you know, close the game down and restarted it. Ugh. Okay, well. See, I thought I thought I was going crazy. <laughs> but I wasn't. I was actually seeing it and did it didn't show up earlier, now it's showing up again. It's a mystery. That's all I can say. It's the corn mystery. The mystery of corn. The mystery of selling corn. Okay, well... Um, who is going to give us the best price for this tiny bit of corn here? There's not very much there, but it's something, right? Um, so it looks like the fast food restaurant buys corn and like straight up buys corn. That's interesting. Um, but it looks like Goldcrest is going to give us the best price. Johnson's isn't too far behind Goldcrest though. And we will have to rent the train if we do Goldcrest. Not that that, you know, we won't have it for a long enough time for that to be a big deal. Oh so, yeah, let's just, let's send it to Goldcrest. That's fine. Push it right on out. Love that conveyor belt in our trailer. Oh, there's a train. We gotta catch it quick. Come back, train. Okay, it should it should reverse and come back this way. Yeah, I think it's coming back. Okay, good. So we caught that at a good time. Let's probably get our tractor out of the middle of the road. We're just going to park it right on up this way. Who needs stop signs? Whoops. Hold your horses there, Van. Okay, we need to back up just a little bit here. Open the cover. Okay, stop. Start filling. We want corn. Yep, it's not much. <laughs> we'll make a couple of pennies off of it, though. Well, we made thirty-eight ninety-eight, almost four grand off of it. That's more than I thought we were going to. Okay, that's not so bad. It only costs us twenty-eight bucks to lease the train. Okay, now we got to go down to the other grain silo and pick up our, our uh, what is it, wheat? Yeah, I think it's wheat. Yeah. So that we can uh, feed our chickens. So let's get that going. Okay, we're looking for wheat. Let's fill her up. That's not me doing that, that's the camera. Okay. And I'm guessing the chicken silo is probably going to take all of this. Because we didn't have quite a full load when we stored it. 
the last time and the silo is pretty close to being empty but this will fill it back up nicely for us uh, let's fudge a little bit go this way there isn't a direct road back to our place going that way we have to kind of go around a little bit Okay, let's load them up. Okay, so that puts us at, all right, 7,911 liters. So it fills them up about 90%. So that should last a while. Very good, okay. And we shouldn't have anything else in storage now. Um, off, our, off our own property, of course. Got all those bales there. We got all that money sitting right there. It's awesome. And we got to get this in here. Oh, yeah, let's let's line up a little better here. Without ramming into our new baler on the other end. This will be fun. I can see the baler through the loft there. Well, I could. I can't now. That's probably pretty good there. All right, guys, that wraps up December. So, and I think that wraps up this episode here, too. We're pretty much out of time. So I am going to sleep. We will start the next episode in January. And we're going to make some money. Um, oh, it's like I got my beacons on. Yeah, we're going to sell our silage, um, at least, and let's see. I don't think we have anything else in storage. Let's just double check. If we did, it would show up here on the right under storage. Well, the silage doesn't count because that's already on our property. Okay. And if we look at price fluctuations and we look at silage, yep, next month is the month to sell. So, yeah, I'm expecting... I'm expecting around 150 grand, I think, uh, from all that silage. That's my guess that we'll make. I'm hope I hope I'm wrong and it's more than that, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm expecting from that. Okay, guys, well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and if you did, please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, share the video, and we'll see you in January. Bye bye.